Welcome to Maine Small Mammals. We'll be getting started in just a minute. Welcome to Maine Small Mammals. We're going to go down to Jade, who is live at the Maine Wildlife Park in Gray. Good morning and welcome. My name is Jade, and I'm an educator for the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife here in Maine. And today I'm at the Maine Wildlife Park in Gray to talk about small mammals. The wildlife park has a lot of different species of native Maine animals. Um, we have moose and black bear, different small mammals um, like the porcupine, beaver, fisher, and raccoon, um, lots of species of raptors and different reptiles. So all kinds of different animals that are native to Maine. And all the animals that are here are here because they can no longer live in the wild on their own. So they are um, in some cases orphaned, uh, injured, or in some cases they were even illegal pets. Um, that can no longer live in the wild. So they are the residents here at the wildlife park now. And if you wanna learn more about the park, you can go to mainwildlifepark.com um, to learn about the wildlife park. So today we're gonna to talk about small mammals. I am sure that most of us can think of and imagine our large mammals here in Maine, animals like our moose, bear, deer, fox, bobcats, and lynx. But how many of the smaller mammals do you know? We have a lot of them. I named a couple that we have here at the park, but some of the other small mammals we have here in Maine are things like the porcupines, different species of squirrels, woodchucks and skunks, possums, raccoons, muskrats, different weasels, um, rabbits, the little brown bat and star-nosed moles, also metal voles and white-footed mice. So all kinds of different small mammals, and they all live in a variety of different habitats and are all very important parts of the ecosystem. And some are predators, some are prey, um, some are scavengers, which is nature's cleanup crew, but they all um, play an important part in Maine's wild ecosystem. And we picked a few to talk about today. The first animal that we're gonna talk about is the North American porcupine. And that is the animal that is here behind me. Um, you can see him eating his leaves here. And I don't know if you can see um, quite the other one that's over here on the other side, um, but she seems to be making her way over. So we'll stop and say hi to them a few times as we go along and um, see what they're up to behind us. So porcupine in Latin actually means quill pig. It's a very appropriate name for them. Um, porcupines have very special teeth. They have orange teeth that are enriched with iron because they chew on branches and other small plants for food. Um, so they have these special iron enriched teeth that are very strong for eating that plant material. They are most known for the way they protect themselves, those quills on their body, the porcupine quills. So that porcupine standing up is the porcupine here at the park. And you can see his mixture of regular fur, his, his just brown kind of thick fur, and then the quills that are mixed in there with them, especially there on top of his head is a closer view of those quills. I have some quills here that I can get close up to you, hopefully. So this is that quill. And these are a modified hair. So they're made out of the same kind of material that the rest of their hair on their body is, but they're modified, um, to serve a different purpose and that is for protection. Porcupines will, can have 20,000 quills or more on their bodies. And these quills cannot be thrown from their body. That is a common myth um, that 
the porcupines can shoot their quills at something when they are in danger, but you actually have to make contact um, with the porcupine to get those quills poked into you. So they cannot throw them um, and they do regrow their lost quills, just like the other hairs on their body. If they um, shed or lose some, they will grow back. They also have very long claws. They climb trees and they live up in trees. Um, and they also use those to groom themselves so they can scratch and pick at themselves with their claws so they aren't getting um, quilled themselves in their hands. And they eat browse. So browse is a way of saying parts of trees. So you can see here, this is from our porcupines here at the park and they have chewed up, they've used those special um, strong iron enriched teeth to chew on this wood. And they've picked out all of the twigs and leaves and eaten those. So that is what they eat and some of their favorites are um, hemlock and other hardwoods. So if you are in a hardwood forest, um, that is prime porcupine habitat. And you wanna look for them um, up in the trees where they'll rest during the day. Um, and if they're scurrying around on the ground and you come up on a porcupine, they'll probably climb right up a tree with their good climbing claws. And he is still just mowing away here behind us. We have um, maple in there for them right now on this side and um, a little bit of hemlock over on the other side. And those are some of their favorites. <laughs> it's breakfast time. The next animal that we'll talk about is the muskrat. And these, is, these also have um, special teeth for gnawing on um, plants. They look very, very much like a beaver. They live in the water and are good swimmers, but they are much smaller and they don't build um, dams or lodges like beavers do. They make small burrows um, in the embankment of the water and they use aquatic plants like um, cattails, not wood, to make those little shelters for themselves. I have a beaver skull here and the beaver skull is a lot like the muskrat skull. So the muskrat's gonna have the similar teeth um, to the beaver, it's just gonna be a lot smaller. The sun's coming out, so it's really shining on this. We can see those iron and rich teeth, those orangey yellow teeth that are very strong for chewing up those plants. This is the size of the muskrat. So like I said, they are much smaller than a beaver. This is an adult muskrat. And an adult beaver is going to be much larger than this, but very similar um, adaptations because they live in similar habitats. So they're going to have this nice outer layer of fur that's going to be waterproof um, to help keep them dry and warm. And then thick, fluffy fur underneath that's also going to insulate them and help keep them warm in their wet habitat. We're also going to talk about some weasels. So there are several different species of weasels here in Maine. The first one that we'll talk about, um, we'll look at a weasel here. Where did my pine martin go? There we go. So this is a pine martin. And this just gives a good general idea of what a weasel um, body shape and design is. So they have these very long, slender bodies. They have very sharp teeth. And most um, weasels can take down prey that is up to three times their own body size. So even though they're kind of, they're a little bit smaller and like that long skinny shape, they're very, very strong and very powerful and they pack a big punch in a little body. So one of the species we have here in Maine is the mink and they are excellent swimmers. They live in wetland habitats and they're mostly nocturnal. You can see that same slender, um, body shape and the long tail. We also have a pine martin, which is the fur I was just holding, and they live up in the trees. They are very, very good tree climbers. Another weasel that is a good tree climber is the fisher, and we often call them fisher cats, but they're actually not related to felines at all, and they don't fish. They do not eat fish, so kind of a poor name for them, but another weasel. We also have river otters, which 
are um, the most aquatic of the weasels and they live in um, small social family groups. Most weasels don't do that. And then there's also the ermine, the short-tailed weasel. And they have to eat two thirds of their body weight each day. And they also change their fur color. So that is a picture of um, an ermine on the bottom with the white belly and the brown top. And that is their color um, in the warmer months. But once the snow falls, their body will turn a uh, solid white so they can blend into their uh, winter habitat. I have a river otter fur here too. I could show you because again, I said they're the most aquatic of the weasels. So their fur kind of like the muskrat or the beaver is designed for living in the water. So it's very sleek and that's gonna help insulate and protect them from getting um, wet and keep them dry and warm. All right. Next animal with well, small mammals we'll talk about are rodents. So here in Maine, we have chipmunks, gray squirrels, red squirrels, flying squirrels, and woodchucks. Some general things about squirrels. They are very fuzzy, and they have fuzzy fur and fuzzy tails. They also have those iron-enriched teeth for gnawing and eating. They use their tails for balance and even um, as rudders when they're swimming. And they scurry around, they mainly eat plants and they stash food um, for saving for later. The first squirrel that we'll talk about is the red squirrel. So if you're hiking in the woods in Maine, chances are you have heard one of these um, scold you. They have a very sharp chatter if you are getting too close. And they are um, diurnal. That means that they're more active during the day. They survive by storing or hiding food. Pine seeds are one of their favorite, um, but they hide their food all in one spot. And that's kind of different from some other squirrels that will scatter their food around that we'll also talk about. Um, but they hide their food in one spot so they know where to look um, to get their food. The next squirrel we'll talk about is the flying squirrel. So contrary to their name, they can't actually fly. They um, actually glide. They have these special um, skin folds that go from their front to back legs, and they will um, glide from tree to tree using those skin folds like a little parachute to carry them. And they are strictly nocturnal. They will very rarely be seen during the day. They are almost only active at night. And one of the best places to catch a glimpse of these guys is at your bird feeder at night. So if you want to watch your bird feeder or set up maybe a little game camera, you might be able to catch these um, flying squirrels hopping around. Next one we'll talk about is the eastern chipmunk. So they are a very small squirrel and they make that chip, chip, chip call that sometimes um, sounds like a bird or is mistaken for a bird call. And they're also active during the day and they do not hibernate, but they do move underground um, during the winter where they've stored most of their food. And then the gray squirrel. So this is a species of squirrel that actually scatters their nuts all around. Um, they have a very good sense of smell. So they actually smell their way back to their stash. They can even smell um, their stored food under a foot of snow. And they're very abundant here at the wildlife park. We have a lot of oak trees and acorns are one of their favorite foods. So we have tons of these gray squirrels here at the park because we have a lot of their favorite food from those oak trees. And they can have two litters a year. Um, each of their litters can have two to four babies. So these gray squirrels, um, these are all the squirrels that we commonly think of as squirrels. But then we also have the woodchuck. And woodchucks are also a squirrel. They belong to a family of large ground squirrels called marmots. They are a burrowing member of the squirrel family and they love to come above ground and wander around looking for flowers and grasses and other little plants to eat. Sometimes they even sneak to it into our gardens and eat our veggies and sugary things in our gardens. And they are actually a true hibernator. So in the winter, their body temps drop below 40 degrees for up to five to six months. So they are a true hibernator. They are not being active and getting up and wandering around during the winter. They are going to a very deep um, dormancy. 
And Western Marmot relatives are nicknamed whistle pigs. And that is because they make a very loud whistling alarm call to alert the rest of the colony and other animals um, when they feel threatened. The next animal we'll look at is an endangered species here in Maine. And this is the little brown bat. They are the only mammal that can truly fly and they can catch and eat half their body weight in insects every night. So they catch a lot of insects. They are good, um, they are insectivores. They're gonna be eating in insects. And they live in very large colonies, but unfortunately this makes their population very susceptible to disease such as rabies and white nose syndrome, which is really hurting our little brown bats here in Maine. And again, they are an endangered species. We believe that more than 90% of their population has been lost in Maine. And they are a very important species for managing insects. So if you don't like mosquitoes, you definitely want to care about and try and protect these little brown bats because they eat a lot of mosquitoes. Another endangered species here in Maine is the New England cottontail. So the New England cottontail is found um, in only a few areas of southern Maine. Maine is this species most northern um, limit to their range. So they're very hard to find and they only live in southern Maine. And it's believed that there are less than 300 um, of these uh, New England cottontails left in Maine as of 2017. Separately from the New England cottontail, there is the eastern cottontail. And the Eastern Cottontail is a non-native species and they were introduced um, to Maine and they outhunt a lot of the native New England species. So our native species has shorter ears with little black marks around, the, around their ears and a smaller body and a little black spot right between their ears. So again, these New England Cottontails are endangered and that is due to um, habitat loss as well as that introduced Eastern Cottontail species. We also have snowshoe hare and the snowshoe hare are much more abundant than the New England Cottontail. We have a lot of snowshoe hare here in Maine. They change color for different seasons. So in the winter, they have that um, snowy white fur and then they'll have the brown fur um, in the spring and summer. So very much like that ermine, the short-tailed weasel we talked about. They're gonna change the color of their fur based on the different um, changes in their habitat for different seasons. And these uh, hare can leap 12 feet in a single bound and run 30 miles per hour. So they're very um, agile, quick animals. And they're one of the most important prey um, species for Canada lynx, which is another, um, is a feline that lives here in Maine. So very important that we have these snowshoe hare to help our Canada lynx populations as well. The next animal we'll look at is the striped skunk. So I have a skunk fur here. And I'm sure you've seen one of these at night. So they have these white stripes and those stand out in the dark. Skunks are nocturnal, which means they're most active at night. So this white stripe stands out in the dark and it is a warning sign. It warns other animals to stay away because as we also know, skunks spray. So skunk musk is a um, sulfur alcohol compound and it's secreted from their anal glands. And skunks can spray multiple times in a row, um, but it does take time for them to sort of refill their tank if they do spray a lot. But they can spray several times um, back to back. And one of their most common predators is the great horned owl. So the owl is not obviously not very afraid of that stinky uh, musk and they will swoop in silently and scoop these skunks off the ground. So one of their most, most active predators is the great horned owl. The next animal we'll look at is the raccoon. I have a raccoon fur here also. And raccoons are very um, tactile animals. They have a very strong sense of touch and they use their hands to feel for food in streams and under logs and rocks. 
And these animals will eat almost anything. So they are omnivores, means they eat um, plants and other animals. They'll eat just about anything they can find. And we have some pictures here too. Um, we can see kind of a close up of their hands and their feet, again, for feeling around and finding food and also um, for climbing. They are very good climbers, very good dexterity in their hands. And that white raccoon on the side, he is albino. And that is one of the raccoons here at the wildlife park. So he does not have any of the gray or black color pigment like most other raccoons. Um, so he is an albino animal. He completely lacks um, that color pigment that is very iconic to the other raccoons. So if you wanna visit him here at the park um, and see a very unique albino raccoon, um, you can come visit our raccoon here at the park. So I talked about many different types of mammals in Maine. We have big mammals and small mammals, carnivores, herbivores, um, but like I said, they all play a very important role in the ecosystem and they all have a special job and they live all across Maine. I would love to answer any questions if any questions have come in about small mammals. Someone had a question about raccoons. Um, sometimes they're seeing raccoons out um, during the day right now. And they were just wondering if that means that they are definitely sick or if they're just out. So you can't say that they're definitely sick. Um, raccoons are um, gonna be more active at night um, and it can be a sign that maybe they're not finding their food or something is wrong. Um, that they're going out and searching for that during the day. Um, so one of the best things you can do is contact um, either your local animal control or even um, reach out to the Department of Inland Fishers and Wildlife and we can maybe try and put you in touch with um, someone who can give you some advice or a local rehabber who can give you some advice or signs to look at. Um, but it could be a perfectly healthy, happy raccoon um, that just wanted to go for a walk during the day also. So just because an animal is mostly nocturnal doesn't mean that there's no chance of you seeing it during the day too. And someone would like to know, what is the porcupine at the park's favorite food? So here at the park, we don't just give them browse. They eat some other foods too. So we bring them a big veggie platter um, every day to supplement um, their diet. So some of their favorite things are um, leafy greens. So we give them different um, lettuces and leafy greens. They also eat um, butternut squash and zucchini, which is a little bit more sugary. So that's probably one of their very favorites. Um, we can't give them anything too sugary like fruits because it's not as good for them. Um, but some of those vegetables have a little bit more sugar. So those are a extra special sweet treat for them that they really like. That's great. And someone would like to know, do uh, bats eat black flies? Yeah, so bats eat um, just about any other like flying insect. Um, so they're going to eat moths and mosquitoes, flies, um, all those things that are also in the air with them at night. Um, bats, one of the reasons that they are nocturnal is because they don't have to compete with birds that also eat insects. So a lot of our birds are active during the day flying around eating similar things to the bats, um, but so they don't compete with each other. The bats will be looking for those flying insects at night. Um, but yes, they'll eat flies and mosquitoes, um, moths, all kinds of flying insects. All right, and if anybody has any other questions, feel free to send us a message and we'd be happy to answer them for you. Yes, and I'm going to um, pick up my phone and we will go uh, say goodbye to the porcupines. So we just wait one second. Get my phone here. I had some breakfast and are now taking a little rest. So this is the male porcupine here at the wildlife park. And he is just snoozing away on top of his log here. You can see those quills on his back end. And when he's really nervous, he kind of can stand them up on end. And he almost looks twice his size when he does that. He does it when he stretches too. He'll kind of stretch his body and 
show those quills off. And wandering over closer to us, this is the female porcupine. She is saying, can I get some more breakfast? <laughs> and she has um, less long hairs on her body. So that's one of the ways we tell these two porcupines apart here at the park. Her fur is a little bit shorter and it's always been that way. Just something that is unique between the two of them. He has longer hairs kind of sticking out crazy around his body. So thank you, porcupines. You are really showing off. <laughs> but you can, you can see, see the those really sharp claws too. Yeah. And that's what she's using to groom herself and climb around. I think she was showing her teeth too, if you could see those orange iron and rich teeth. All right. So did any other questions come through for us? Um, that is it. Okay. Well, thank you all. Those are some great questions. Um, I hope you had fun learning about Maine small mammals. And if you um, have any questions or want to just learn more and see um, the rest of our wildlife talks and tours scheduled for the rest of this month, you can go to mefishwildlife.com dot com um, and find resources for things to do at home as well as other virtual online things that we are doing so thank you all again and have a great day